Hey everybody, um, welcome back from spring break. I wanted to follow up on the hazy topic uh, flip grid that you guys did and just um, applaud you guys on a really great job uh, in, in doing that discussion board. Um, also, um, just think it's super cute that Patrick always responds to Ashley's flip grid um, and they're fabulous by the way, so I know why he does respond. Um, He's partial to that, but she does really have some awesome flip grids, and so you should you should listen to them too. Um, make a point of it. Anyway, uh, this was a really great discussion. There's so many different ways that this can go. Um, CBD oil, medicinal marijuana, recreational marijuana, the fact that Canada has it legalized. Um, there's just tons of different things here. Um, first of all, um, the first thing that states could do is just decriminalize it, and um, that would help from from a criminality perspective, it seems weird. Like you might be like, well, why would they do that? Well, the Netherlands did that. So um, everybody looks at the Netherlands as having legalized pot, but it's not, it's tolerated. Um, and they there are certain limits, like you can have one plant or two plants or something like that. And it's very limited um, and they tolerate it and they don't criminalize it. So um, that is, it's not necessarily legal though. Um, it's just not illegal until it hits a certain point, if that makes sense. Um, so it's just different wording, but that's how they handled it. Um, as far as uh, transporting marijuana from one state to another, that is still not allowed. Um, UCC guidelines uh, regulate interstate commerce and trade, and interstate commerce and trade is regulated by the federal government, so that is not allowed. Um, in addition, um, the federal government has... Um, because it's not legal through the federal government, um, businesses cannot use federally insured banks um, to store their money. So that also posed some issues for businesses um, that were starting and opening up in this area. Um, and then recently in the news, um, the Health Administration has um, banned the use of CBD oil in different products that you eat. So like some places have like smoothies with CBD oil in it or whatever. I think somebody, Lance might have mentioned that he researched some um, bars in California that had CBD oil that they mixed in their drinks and things like that. Um, that can't happen anymore based on the Food and Drug Administration because it's never been tested and um, the concentration of CBD oil is very different from one place to another. Um, so um, that is a complete bad no-no, which makes me wonder about edibles, um, any type of edible, like I know that that's a big business, gummies and all that kind of stuff. I don't think that's going to be allowed anymore. Um, and unless it was just a state thing like California, but um, I saw something on the news about that. I thought it was from the Federal um, Health Drug and Health Administration um, because it's in your food, although there's other food items that could be banned. But um, So what businesses are then doing is um, selling CBD oil separate from their food and ha let, letting people mix it in themselves um, so that they're not liable for anything that might happen from it. So lots of um, just legal jumping through the hoops as far as that goes. Um, for businesses, though, it poses an interesting issue. Um, medicinal, me medicinal use... Um, cannabis, I guess I would say, um, generally has the THC removed. Um, there, You can still get marijuana to smoke medicinally as well, um, but a lot of pills and things that, that you can take, um, especially for treating things like cancer and the side effects of cancer, um, are in pill format and they don't have the THC, which impacts, impairs your judgment. Um, so you don't need the THC uh, to get the medicinal benefits from it. Uh, so that is one way around that um, for for employers and for um, employees. Um, so it's it's not as, I guess, as bad or potent. Think of it as non-alcoholic beer, kind of the same thing, but medicinally better. Um, so that's something, that's just something to be aware of. Um, I don't know that it's a fairness that some people get it and some people don't. It's not fair that some people get cancer and some people don't. So um, I don't really see that fairness as a thing to be that concerned about who gets it and who doesn't um, and as long as uh, the cards are given to people who need it truly which there's probably some question about that but um, so then employers have to look at what type of job they have and some people really posed um, interesting points from 
well, the unemployment rate is so low, you know, lower your standards, that kind of thing. And I think for some businesses, that's going to be very possible. Um, I know, like, my employer didn't test. Um, I know that if I came to work high, they'd be able to tell. Um, it'd be a problem. Uh, so we still have a drug-free workplace. They have the right to test me at any point in time. Um, but unless you do something that would warrant it, it's not it's not going to happen. So um, I think that's one way to handle it. Um, another way to handle it is, you know, like I think Jan um, Janet said, um, we just banned it everywhere. Uh, or Vicki, it was Vicki. Um, she said, I we just banned it everywhere and it doesn't matter. It's just not something that we tolerate, which is also another approach. Um, I know it can be problematic for people who have had used it in the past, though, and I know even background checks, when they find um, incarceration in a background check, generally companies now look to see what the reason was for it, and if it was drug-related, minor drug charge, that kind of stuff, that they kind of dismiss that from a background check, um, because so many people have it. Um, it's kind of ridiculous, um, and having been in HR, I know that that to be the case. Um, a lot of people... It's not unusual. Let's just put it that way. It's just not unusual anymore. So, and then something to kind of be aware of in that case. But then you've got those jobs where I don't know if you would want people to have smoked marijuana the day before or the week before or the day of. Um, I don't want to know that my pilot was high the night before. I don't want to know that my mechanic who worked on my brakes has smoked weed every day Um before he goes to bed. Um, I don't want to, I, I don't want that to be the case. I, I want somebody who is alert and high functioning working on my vehicles, um, or flying my plane or performing surgery or whatever that might be. Um, so I know in the transportation industry, having worked at Schneider, our drivers did have, um, we had nurses and they had to pass a medical test, um, which included a drug screening. Any medication or drugs they were on was reviewed. Um, even drugs like Chantix, which is to quit smoking, were a no-go drug for a driver. If you were on Chantix, you would be benched until you were off of it um, because of what happens when you sleep at night and that you're not getting good restful sleep. So it's not so much that it's impairing your ability to drive during the day, um, but it's impairing your ability to get a good night's sleep, and that's an issue. So um, I think companies like that, companies that have mechanics, people that operate heavy machinery, construction workers, police officers, doctors, nurses, things like that, I think, I think that's just imperative in the type of work that they do, that that's just not something that you do. Um, and if that's what you want to do, then that's, that's something that you have to give up or you choose to give up to be able to do that. So I think that's probably still going to happen. Um, I don't know that there's any way around that. Um, for myself, you know, I, I lift weights, I compete, um, I'm drug tested regularly. Every piece of medication I'm on goes into the database to make sure that I can take it. Um, I would not take anything that would negatively impact my performance in any way um, or cognitively impair me over time which is um, one of the things that they're finding with marijuana, so with regular marijuana use. So I think more to come, definitely. Somebody had talked about that, like, how long will it take before we know the true side effects? I, I think it'll come, um, but yeah, you're right. It'll probably take some time. So in the meantime, um, we're going to deal with this one day at a time and one court case at a time, I'm sure, because there is no right or wrong way to handle that. Totally why I called it hazy topic, because... I don't have an answer. <laughs> so great job um, communicating that. I hope you had a wonderful spring break. Um, can't wait to see what the next one holds.